Hello, CAM 115 students. I want to give you a few more examples with precipitation and acid-base reactions so that you can practice them. And if you're looking for, for, for problems with precipitation, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitation. Now, the rules that were shown in CHEM Activity 21 were these where you have to understand which compounds are going to be soluble. These things are not necessarily your favorite things, so there is another way to look at them and that is the chart from the textbook. <clears throat> if they're not listed in this table, these, these are only ones that are soluble. The ones that are soluble are in this left column. They have some compounds with no exceptions. We like them, namely this top bracket. And then there are other compounds that do have exceptions. The halides are all together with this one set of exceptions on the right, and the sulfates have their set of uh, um, exceptions. Notice that mercury and lead are commonly exceptions. Okay, using that and the information from the reaction today, or from the chem activity, is to recall how we're going to look for neutralization and precipitation reactions. When we switch the cation and anion pairs, you can either end up with one of these two possibilities, perhaps a neutralization, where you have an acid plus a base, an acid with a hydrogen ion in front, the base has a hydroxide ion, and then you will commonly get a salt and water, but not always, but commonly. And <clears throat> the precipitation reactions when you swap the partners an insoluble solid results. In this example shown up above here, this one also generates an insoluble solid, so it has both features in this particular one. So we're looking for either water or insoluble products to form to know that a reaction has occurred. The solubility rules are not necessarily your favorite, but you just plain have to know them. So put them on your note card now so you'll be familiar with them when it comes, or can you find them conveniently when it comes to the test. All right, so let's balance some equations and see how this works out. The first challenge is to write the formulas. And this is the thing that we haven't, oops, sorry, um, that we forget to do and to keep our practice on. So let's work on this. The lead 2 nitrate means lead has a plus 2 charge. Nitrate has a minus 1 charge. And so if lead has plus 2, you will need two nitrates to go with it. Whoops, there's a 3 there, sorry. And PbNO3 twice is aqueous. And combining it with sodium iodide. Sodium is plus 1, iodide is minus 1. That means you only need one of each for the formula. And that's aqueous as stated. Now we're going to see if we can predict the products. First thing you do is look at the cations and then you s figure out the anions and switch. So this time we're going to put lead with iodide and in this case lead was a plus two because it says so right there and so iodine is a minus one charge iodide takes two to go with it. Leave the parenthesis to fill in and then the second compound has to be the sodium with the nitrate and we have to decide the formula and the phase. First question is, is the formula correct? Well, if sodium is plus one and nitrate is minus one, one of each is sufficient. That formula is fit, correct. And what goes in parenthesis? If you remember the rules, sodium is always aqueous, so we don't have to look twice. But um, nitrate is also always aqueous. What about lead with iodide? Iodide is a halogen. Halogens will precipitate in certain places with lead, mercury, and silver. So this one is one of the examples where lead precipitates. In order to balance the equation, now we have to count the parts left and right and make sure they come out even. So on the left, we have one lead. On the right, we have one lead. So far, so good. On the left, there's two nitrates. On the right, there's one nitrate. So we're going to need to put two in front of sodium nitrate before this will balance. And when you do that, that means you end up with two sodium as well. And that means that we have, this is a little hard to see here, you're going to have to put two over here on the sodium on the left. And that means you end up with two iodide ions, which is consistent with I2 in that formula. Okay, these do take a minute. Let's work through another one. Sodium hydroxide is going to be aqueous because it says so. As a compound that you should recognize when there's a hydroxide, it is going to be a base. And 
says aqueous, don't ask any more questions, just write it down, but it's because it contains sodium. And so sodium is always going to end up in the aqueous soluble compound. And then we'll leave some room to balance. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Willie was a chemist. He isn't anymore. What he thought was H2O was H2SO4. And again, this one is aqueous. This acid will always be aqueous, but you take their word for it when it's provided for you. And now, oh, symbol is terrible. The products then we'll have to look and see what kind of things are going to cat where cations and anions will recombine. On the left we have a cation of sodium and hydroxide. So sodium is going to have to go with something new. So what can the sodium combine with? The sodium will have to go with the anion from this other pair. The hydrogen ion is thought of in rightfully as a plus one ion and sulfate is minus two, which is why there's two hydrogens with it. And so sulfate's going to go with our sodium. And the sulfate is SO4. And we'll leave room for the phase here in a moment, but let's get the formula correct first. And the formula needs to have what? The sulfate is minus two, sodium is plus one. The charge of one becomes a subscript on the other. Put a two after the sodium. And we'll come back to the phase label. Other products. The products otherwise will have to be the second cation, which is hydrogen, ion, and hydroxide. Hydrogen with OH. Oh, wait a minute. That's just water. HOH, also known as water. I'm going to write it as hydrogen hydroxide for the moment, just to remind you that that's where it comes from. And it makes your balancing easier, too. All right, so guess what? The phase label on that one should be easy. This one is a liquid. Nothing more to remember. If water is a liquid, that's fine. Now, what's the solubility of this other product? Sodium sulfate. Again, sodium compounds are always aqueous, always soluble. Hooray for them. It makes life easier. And now do we have a balanced equation? Well, I'm guessing right off the top that having two sodium here might require balancing. So go back and begin at the left end and realize you put two in front of sodium hydroxide. That means that there will also be two hydroxides, which in this case makes it easier to think about balancing because two hydroxides are going to combine with two hydrogens, two hydrogen ions, to make water two times. So put a two in front of the hydrogen hydroxide, a.k.a. water. And after you've done that, we keep progressing from the left. We did sodium, we did hydroxide. The hydrogen ions have been accounted for. And then there's sulfate. Well, there's only one sulfate on the right, left side so far. There's one on the right. This one is balanced. This is an acid-base reaction. Because you seriously have sodium hydroxide is a, a, a base. And, uh oh this is not writing today. And... Um, Sulfuric acid is what it says. It's an acid. The first one, if I didn't say it clearly, was a precipitation reaction because you have the formation of an insoluble solid. So this one is precipitation. Okay, next example. Remembering formulas takes practice, so let's think about it. Ammonium is a polyatomic ion that we haven't used for too while, so we need to recall that it's a NH4. And look it up on your polyatomic ions list so you'll get familiar with it. But also, just put it on your note card if it helps. I don't care. And ammonium has a plus one ion, so I'll write that by its name here. Chloride is a minus one ion. And so one ammonium corresponds to one chloride in this formula. And it says aqueous, so we'll put AQ on here. The second reactant is, in this case, potassium nitrate. Maybe room to balance. I'm going to write K for potassium. Uh-oh, but think about the formula. Potassium is a plus one alkali metal ion. Nitrate, as it is up on the top of the screen here, is a minus one anion. So plus one, minus one, nothing to balance that formula out. It's quite simple. And so KNO3 is complete when we put it in here. And if it says aqueous, we'll write it as aqueous. If it had not been given, this is a case where you have two things that are 
always soluble. Potassium is always soluble. Nitrate is always soluble. They won't ever get anything besides an AQ label. <clears throat> okay, combining products. Let's see. First cation is ammonium, and we'll combine with the opposite anion. In this case, that would be nitrate. So the ammonium ion is NH4, and we'll combine that plus one ammonium ion with a minus one nitrate ion. And again, one-to-one -one ratio is very straightforward, simple to do. And again, we'll have to predict its phase. The second product from this reaction will be potassium with chloride. And so charges on these are each one, potassium plus one, chloride is minus one. And now we have to decide about our phases. And if we're paying attention to what you heard a few minutes ago, I told you that potassium is always soluble. So it's group one element, group one ion. And so it's going to be aqueous. And the um, other compound is ammonium nitrate. Nitrates are also always soluble. So again, we'll put an AQ on that one on its phase label. Imagine that this tool is writing better than it is. This is really making me annoyed. Um, and then that means that you have two aqueous products. This, in this case, there is no solid form, no uh, liquid form, and so we call this one a no reaction. In other words, no chemical change has taken place. All right, these are just a couple more examples to give you an idea of how you need to pay attention to balancing formulas, or drawing correct formulas, predicting products, predicting the phases of products, and then also balancing equations. Oh, I forgot to double check this last one. Plus one, minus one on all the ions, so this equation was balanced. I forgot to verify that, and they're all good to go. Um, I wish you good luck with all your other homework problems. These just take practice. Um, Please do ask questions as needed. I hope this will be helpful to you.